Now I want to get into the next part of my series about diabetes and explain what's happening, what's causing it, and the information to describe what is actually happening is relatively new. Most researchers did not figure this out until around 2000, although there was speculation before that. Now most of your clinicians believe that diabetes is a problem of sugar control or glucose control. And that's actually not true. The problem is mainly one with fat use. So here's what happens. As you create an environment through a high carbohydrate diet, which is high insulin and low glucagon. So insulin helps drive fuel into the cells by potentiating the action of glucose on the cell membrane. And the alternative hormone is glucagon, and that is directed primarily at liver function to drive the burning of ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are manufactured from fatty acids that are released from the fat cells in the blood. So the nutritional environment, the hormonal and nutritional environment that creates high insulin, low glucagon, is one of high carbohydrate consumption, which is what most people are doing. Most people are consuming anywhere from 50 to 70, 80 percent of their daily foods as carbohydrate, and that creates this environment. Uh, this also causes fat to be taken up, or glucose to be taken up into the fat cell, and eventually you get a condition where you have high triglyceride levels and other problems that all lead to the development of high fat levels in your muscle cells, in your muscle cells. It's called intramyocellular lipids. Now, what's the problem with this? So now we get an accumulation in the cells of lipids or fats, and we can't burn them. So in the, in the liver, we have these mitochondria. They're the powerhouses of your cell. And there's an enzyme in the mitochondria called CPT1. And this enzyme takes fat and moves it into the mitochondria where it can be burned or oxidized as a source of energy. Now, in the liver cell, there's another substance called malonyl-CoA. Malonyl-CoA. So, the, the fats that are available to be burned can either be burned or they can be shuttled over to storage and stored and produced as triglyceride, which is then sent back out into the blood where it goes to the fat cell and gets stored as fat, and you get fatter. So malonyl-CoA is a substance that is the first committed step, first committed step. Can that be reversed? Once the food stuff goes and becomes malonyl-CoA, that's it. It's committed to be converted into body fat by another very important enzyme. Now, one of the major problems in diabetes is something called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance. So the body's cells become resistant to the action of insulin to cause it to take up glucose, to have the cells take up glucose. Now, of course, if you weren't seeing much glucose, in other words, if you were on a low-carbohydrate diet and you weren't getting exposed to too much glucose, then you don't even need insulin at all because then you could become a fat burner. You could rely on fat as your source of energy, and the fat will readily diffuse into the cells where it can be burned for energy. So insulin resistance is the common problem in diabetes. It's also implicated in heart disease and metabolic syndrome and obesity. All these people are insulin resistant. Now, they're going to keep seeing insulin as long as they keep consuming a high-carbohydrate diet. So what's going on inside the cell that makes the cell insulin resistant? We know we're getting this accumulation of fat inside the muscle cell, but it turns out that the enzyme, CPT1, that takes fat and puts them into the liver so they can be burnt for energy, is inhibited by malonyl-CoA. So that diverts more food into conversion to malonyl-CoA and thence to fat. 
This is just basic biochemistry. Now, few people know anything about this. Uh, the whole malonyl-CoA CPT1 cycle has only been known for 10 or 15 years. When I was in graduate school, I never even heard of it. The only reason I know of it now is because this is what I do. I read this stuff. So that's what's going on. So malonyl-CoA and CPT1 are the regulators of what's going on inside the cell. Now, a whole cascade of events occurs downstream now in terms of what's happening at the cell membrane where the glucose has to be taken up. So there's a, another substance that gets manufactured in the cell and gets into the cell membrane. It's called GLUT4, G-L-U-T4. This is the GLUT transporter. This grabs the glucose and brings it into the cell. Well, it turns out that when malonyl-CoA shuts down CPT1, that the whole process of manufacturing GLUT4 breaks down. And now the cell membrane becomes resistant to insulin. And this is primarily because you can't burn the fat that's getting into your cells. Now, what happens in athletes, even though they're on a high-carb diet and they're storing fat in their muscle cell, but because of the exercise activity, there is no breakdown, and they can burn that fat. They shuttle that fat through the mitochondria, and it's important to prevent disease that the mitochondria can burn more fat, because this is the primary fuel of the body. So this is how this whole process works. So diabetes is, in fact, a disease that is caused by a dysregulation in fat metabolism. Uh, obviously, the glucose or sugar is leading to the problem, but it's not the primary control. So, directing all of our attention at getting glucose control and glucose regulation is going to be very challenging as long as we all keep continuing to consume a high carbohydrate diet as is recommended. It's a major, major problem. So, this whole thing goes beyond weight control, using the low-carb diet as a weight control issue. It drives to the heart of your very health and your very future. So, carbohydrate restriction is the order of the day. That's what you should be doing. And I explain in my work how to do that, the best ways to do that. And certainly, one of the poorest ways to do that is to follow the Atkins version of the low-carb diet which is fraught with so many problems. So there you are. There's my series on diabetes. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.